Hi there, welcome back to the new video. Today we'll be talking about this paper which is Lama Rec, two stage recommendations using large language models for ranking. So as I discussed some of the cons in the previous one, this one tries to solve some of them which is how do we rank your recommendations and how to also do that efficiently. So let's get into the abstract and see what they're trying to do. So it says that majority of the existing methods perform training free recommendation that heavily relies on the pre-trained knowledge that these language models have. For example, if you look into movie recommendation, right? So we expect that the language models already have a pre-trained knowledge about all the movies because of the kind of data that they're trained on. So now if I give you, let's say one, two, three movies, and based on that, if I write an appropriate prompt, it already holds a lot of candidate information within itself that it can use to kind of map to the sequence of movies that I watched and potentially the, and potentially suggest the next movie that I should be seeing. So that's what it's written, right? So we expect that the language models already come with all these pre-trained knowledge, which might not always be the case to be true if you're doing certain domain specific recommendations. For that, you'll have to customize your LLM and fine tune it in that fashion. And also the inference on LLMs is slow due to their autoregressive generation because you are essentially generating one word at a time for the next item that is to be seen or that is to be displayed to the user, right? So that decoding takes some time, which makes it less effective in case you're trying to do real-time recommendations. So this paper proposes two-stage framework using large language models for ranking-based recommendation as a shot from its Lama Rec, wherein you have first step as retriever and the second step as ranker. And their experiments show that performance of Lama Rec consistently achieves superior performance when compared to state-of-the-art baseline methods. Cool, so let's move forward and see what this two-stage process looks like. So on the left, what you see is the retrieval phase. We'll talk in a moment to what middle segment is. And the right phase is the ranking phase. So if you notice, we start off with the user interaction. So XI is nothing but the movie that the user has interacted or seen essentially and let's say you have t such movies which is x1 to xt now this goes to your retrieval system that generates certain candidates that you should be seeing next now for this they refer to their paper which is lru rec for getting these retrieved candidates so i haven't read through that paper but seeing the abstract looks like it's really fast because the framework is designed to do recursive parallelization I'll link that paper in the description. Make sure to check it out in case you're interested. But again, this is an empty space that you can fill with any model that you would want. In case you're doing next item recommendation, you can very well go with BERT for REC, which is BERT for doing the recommendations. With the idea on which BERT for REC works is like, you first pre-train BERT given certain movie sequences, let's say, you just mask one of them the way you would typically do for your MLM objective, right? And this is what you then predict on the output end. You do it for a lot of such sequences. And now for any new sequence, let's say these are the things that user has watched. You want to predict what should be coming over here. You apply the same framework over here and this is what gets autofilled. So that's how bird for rec works. You can also employ any rag based system at this point, which is as simple as saying, okay, I have watched these e movies. What should I likely be seeing next? Let's say. So based on item set that you have, or user preference, user profiles, you can build out a rack system that retrieves these top K candidates. So in their implementation using LRU rec, they use top 20 candidates, which is then passed to the instructor and prompter module. Now what it does is, it essentially crafts out a prompt using a certain template, which looks like you start off with instruction. And the instruction is given user history in chronological order. Recommend an item from the candidate pool with its index letter. And then you're given the input wherein you give two things. One is user history and the candidate pool set. And then the response and the, the label, which is the final movie that he should be seeing, right? So if you see through this example, it looks like you already gave this instruction. Then this is the user history, which is all the T movies coming from here, which was the input to the retrieval system. And then you have candidate pool that your LRU rec, BERT for rec, RAG, any other system kind of outputs. And then is your response wherein you have a ground truth saying okay the next movie that you should be seeing having seen all these is a now a is nothing but the index for the private school 
1983 is what the system recommends. So this is how the data set is prepared for LAMA 7 billion model. So they have already avoided one thing which is to not output the entire name of the movie or the title of the movie. So that's one step where they are making it efficient. And since the second step post this is to rank these candidates in terms of the first preference, second preference, third preference and so on. So you can imagine generating titles for all of them becomes a little inefficient. So having an index mapping saves a lot of time. Okay, let's read through more. So during inference, the label position is left empty for prediction. We provide an example. We've already seen it. Cool. So despite using instructions to prompt LLM, the generated output does not directly provide ranking score for the candidates, which is true because it's just producing the most favorable index. So to solve this, most of the existing works essentially try to prompt the system in a way that it produces the ranked list. So what it means is, so at this point, you ask your system to output a ranked list of movies from the candidate pool. And that way you already have the ranking done, right? But that's not the path that these guys have taken. And for the simple reason that I discussed, right? Generating a long list is computationally expensive and often requires further processing as the titles may not exactly match. So they propose a simple verbalizer that transforms the output from LLM into your scores. Okay. So now we are clear, right? So this is how the input format looks like. And the cross entropy loss that the model is trained on is on the output end, which is on the response side. Because during experiments, they found that, so this is a little faster because you need not propagate loss from the entire sequence because the model has to generate it every time. And also the performance was a little better if you just propagate the loss from the target variable, which is whatever comes after response and before the end of the sequence token. So during inference, you just give it till this point. Let me just clear this one out a little bit. Yeah. So during inference, you'll just give the model till this point. And from here, it is expected to produce the output. But instead of directly outputting discrete token, you go to the LLM head and just output the distribution across the words that are likely to be produced at this point. So there you will be seeing a softmax coming over a lot of words where the majority of the head should be coming from A, B, C, D till the 20th index of the alphabet, right? Because that's what the model has seen till now in the fine tuning stage. So you use that information and then map it back to the actual title saying, okay, A is for private school. So that ranks first. And let's say then comes D. So the godfather is the second thing that you should be watching. And that's the preference that you are essentially generating. So that's what happens. The distribution for the head and it generates D should come first, A, B, C, and so on and so forth. So that's the pretty simple and looks like the idea that should work. Let's see if they have any more detail around this. So they adopt index letters to identify the candidates and map the ground truth item to the corresponding index letter. Then the candidate scores can be computed by retrieving the logits of the index letter from the LLM head. In other words, retrieved scores correspond to the next token probability distribution within the index letters. So yeah, that's what I just explained, right? So during training, the idea is to backpropagate through the index letter as the ground truth and not the entire sequence. So Lama Rec requires only one forward pass to get the logits for all the candidate elements for ranking them, which is done at the index level. And also to control the input length for the LLM, they have set the retrievers maximum elements to be 20, which we have already discussed. So that is there. They use QLORA for doing the optimization. Cool. So yeah, that was the idea. So as said, right, in the previous paper on the survey one, we discussed around the efficiency and the improvement of the performance. So this paper tries to address both of them using two-step recommendation strategy, where you first retrieve the elements and then rank them. Rather than putting the entire load on the LLM by asking it to generate a ranked list, you train it in a fashion at an index level and eventually use the logits to derive that ranking. So yeah, that's pretty much for this video. Also, yeah, you also have a code link over here. I'll link that in the description. Make sure to check this as well. So if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also share it with the friends to whosoever is interested in such content. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye-bye and take care.